A beloved high school basketball coach is hospitalized at this hour after being shot several times. NBC 5's Charlie Wojciechowski is at Stroger Hospital with the latest on the coach's condition. Charlie? Allison, his name is Sean Harrington, and right now he's listed in critical condition. Growing up on the west side of Chicago, Sean Harrington used sports as an escape from the neighborhood violence. Basketball quickly became a fixture in his life. Basketball definitely deterred me away from a lot of uh, negativity, but I've never been much of a follower, so I was just crazy about basketball. Going to Marshall High School was a family tradition. My mother went to Marshall High School uh, along with maybe 14 to 15 other my family members, so it was uh, customary for me to go to Marshall High School. As a hoop star at Marshall High School, Sean had a small part in the blockbuster hit, Hoop Dreams. I would just saw cameras around. I was an underclassman, so I didn't hang around with the upperclassmen or the varsity, so I just saw cameras following this guy around the school. I always wondered what was going on. And got a couple of cameos here and there uh, with the camera and uh, going down state. I had one scene on the bus. Yeah! It's definitely still surreal to this day that this is one of the top uh, sports documentaries of all time. Sean ended up at New Mexico State, recruited by Coach Russ Bradburn to play basketball. I think Chicago kids by nature are fighters, uh, especially the point guards. There's a long tradition of great, tough, rugged, street fighter type point guards, and Sean very much fit that mold, but he was very different off the court. He was affectionate and you know, would call out, I love you, man, to, to guys leaving the gym and hugging his teammates. And it was an odd sort of, uh, he seemed to be able to separate, this is the court, this is off the court, which is very unusual. His mother hoped he would stay away from Chicago and the increasingly violent streets. Sean was drawn back to Chicago for the birth of his daughter. My father wasn't around growing up, so that was one of the main things I said, when I do became a father, I'm gonna make sure I was a father that was there and very instrumental uh, in my kids' upbringing. So, uh, you know, being able to come back and just being able to go to take her to camp and take her to school and, you know, take her to the dance class. The same worry Sean's mom had about him took her life in 2003 when she was murdered during a home invasion. I mean, when she walked in, uh, from my understanding, uh, the family was laying there uh, tied up on the floor when she walked in and was, I guess from what I understand, screamed and uh, one of the guys hit her with a gun and chased her out into the backyard and um, uh, shot, her, uh, shot her in the head and killed her in the backyard, shot my mom twice. So, um, I mean, for the, for the longest time I just, I was just, I was, I was lost for the longest time after that. I, I'm a, my only child by my mom, so she was really, was my everything. Though a tough journey, Sean rebounded from his loss and started to coach basketball and teach special ed at Marshall until a fateful morning on January 30th, 2014. Sean was driving his daughter to school like he did every morning, same route, same time, but in a rental car. And I pulled up to a stoplight waiting to make a left-hand turn on the corner of Augusta and Hamlin. Uh, two guys standing outside. I just remember seeing the guys uh, point at the car, and I think I know uh, me and my daughter was under fire by a barrage of bullets. His daughter asked him if they were shot. Sean said no, to which his daughter replied, I don't want to die. While she was screaming, I was just trying to remain calm to help keep her calm. Uh, as the, the shots were going off, I, I felt myself getting hit. I didn't know that the severity, but I felt something hit me in my back. I didn't know at that time that I had been shot, but I was trying to remain calm to keep her calm. Sean had been shot two times. A third bullet was found in his daughter's headrest, all a case mistaken identity. One of the bullets was laying in my coat, so they recovered one there. And uh, then we got to the hospital as they cut my clothes off, the other bullet was laying in the collar of my shirt. So they had uh, uh, recovered both of the bullets. And um, after that, it's just all the blurs all fast. I remained conscious, I never lost consciousness. I do remember that. 
And uh, but the whole at, at this point, as they get me in the truck, it's, uh, I'm, where's my daughter? Get my daughter in the car. Get her here with me. I want to know if she's okay because no one else was there. It was just it was just a whole chaotic scene. A devastating reality set in as Sean realized the unthinkable. The doctors are talking to my family, and I can see my family reacting and crying. And I think that's kind of when it hit home that oh, I think I may be paralyzed. So that's kind of when it all hit home for me. What was that feeling like? I mean, it was it was truly one of those things where like your whole life kind of your whole life kind of flashed before me. Uh, just thinking about all the stuff. That I, that I used to do that I didn't think I was going to be able to do anymore. And the main thing that just sticked in my mind was being able to interact with my kids and do the things with my kids uh, that, I had, that I had been doing the whole time. And worried about them seeing me in that predicament, it, it just, everything just really hit home then. That's when everything got tough. I always think, well, what would I do if I was in that situation? And I'd like to say that I'd act as heroically as he did, but I don't think it's true. I think that what he did was uh, highly unusual. I also think had what he'd done happened in Iraq or Afghanistan, he'd be a national hero. But because it happens on Chicago's west side, it sort of gets swept away or forgotten about. Sean's past was hopefully enough to help guide him into what was sure to be a tough future. But the insurance companies are making it hard for him to get the treatment he needs. Sean still hopes to walk one day. I've actually been out of rehab now a little over a month. I've been going through this referral thing with HMO. I fall into these dark spots with places I don't need to be and now I'm sitting here asking myself why and, and questioning a lot of things where I wasn't in this state before. So it's, it's definitely hard and frustrating to say the least. Sean has returned to physical therapy, and thanks to an amazing research study, he is literally back on his feet. He's one of those people who have the it factor, which gets him to move, which is mostly driven by motivation and the fact that they want to walk again. He's a motivating person just because he's so good-natured and really embraces the challenges placed ahead of him. Um, you know, he has a personality that brings out the best in people around him, I think, and make you want to work hard with him. And this is definitely a highlight of my day or my week when I get to come here and work hard and get to get back to therapy for after being out for so long. So this is definitely my ah moment. Sean Harrington's heroic act that saved his daughter's life should not be taken for granted. Won't you please help Sean to defray his enormous medical costs and make a down payment on an accessible car? Thank you.